everyone. Uh, today, Ma'am Lada will read a novel by Panavadi, uh, Cooking Biwa, a novel about a Thai girl with a passion for Thai cooking by Panavadi, Ponglada K. Iti Nekin. Cooking Biwa, Chapter 1. The ambulance screeched to a stop outside one of the best hospitals in Bangkok, and the paramedics raced out with an old lady on a gurney into the building. She had an oxygen mask over her face. All the Jan knew was that the old lady was still breathing, but barely. She ran into the emergency room after her. Nurses and residents had closed around the old lady and were running down the hall with her to the emergency room as the Jan followed, wanting to ask someone what was happening, what they were going to do. She wanted to know if the old lady would be all right. A blood was racing through her head as someone stuck a clipboard and pin in front of her face. Please sign this. The nurse said gently, What is it? The gen looked panicked. We have to operate fast. Please sign. The gen did as she was told, and a second later, she was standing alone in the hallway, watching other gurneys rush past. With nurses and doctors in hospitals, scrubs hurrying towards operating rooms, and other patients, she went to sit down in the waiting room and try to control herself. She had to do something. Then she reached for the mobile phone in her black purse. Ring 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 ring. Chai Atishar Vachira. A good-looking 28-year-old gentleman with a wrist broken blood took a small mobile phone out from his black jacket and quietly answered. He was in one of the very best restaurants in London, having dinner with the Thai ambassador, Mr. Pawan, and his wife, Madame Prao Pismai, and their daughter, Pra Pimara. He did not expect this OC call because he gave her his mobile number in case of emergency only. Shai Ticha speaking. What is it, the agent matter? He was alarmed by the call. His good looking face turned slightly red with tension caused by the bad news. I will return home immediately. Do take a very good care of my grandmother. Goodbye. His pale long fingers with cream and short fingernails ended the call on his black mobile phone. After he put it back in his black jacket's pocket, he turned his face to smile at his young and beautiful girlfriend, Pra Pimara. This is a call from whom? You look worried. What is the matter? Is it the bad news? Prabhimara asked Gentry with understanding, to which the gentleman replied lightly, My grandmother is in the hospital, having a heart surgery. Ambassador Pawan, a grey-haired, middle-aged man with a light-colored round eyeglasses, kindly spoke in a kind, soft voice. Your grandmother had cut you off from the family because of her bad temper. Don't dwell on the past. She is your only relative left. You must hurry back home to visit her and take very good care of her. Don't worry about your business here. Modern technology such as Line, Facebook, email, Twitter, you name it, can help you take care of your business from everywhere around the world. That's right. Prayer will accompany you to Bangkok 
it will be an opportunity for you to pay respect to your grandmother as well. Madame Pao Pismai, a very beautiful 40-something, who wore a very nice black dress with diamond necklace, earrings, bracelets, and a noticeably strong perfume, said wisely, Nansen, prayer will be a burden to Kun Chai, since he will be relocating to Bangkok in a few months' time. Prayer can go back home with us. Kun Chai, please go. Do not worry about here. I'm willing to do everything I possibly can to help you. Huge thanks, sir. You are welcome. Your father, the knight, used to be my colleague. His fate was most unfortunate. He and your mother died too young. I have no son. So you are adored as my eldest son. Ambassador Puan passed the gentleman's shoulder gently when he saw the young man's sad face. Thank you, sir. As you are going away, shall we have a drink for you? Cheers. Prayer Pimara smiled broadly as she raised her white glass in front of everyone. Her parents looked in embarrassment. Dearest daughter, he is going for a pressure, but he is going to visit his grandmother in the hospital. That's right. I'm so sorry, I forgot. She smiled in embarrassment and immediately placed her white glass on the table. Chai Adisha sat still and felt sad about his grandmother. She was his only remaining relative. She was like a bone that had kept him tight. After his parents died in a car accident a long time ago, his grandmother had raised and supported him through many years in boarding school in England. He rarely visited her in Thailand. He had no friends at all in the land of smiles. He had graduated from a university in London and majored in international relations. He should have followed his father's footsteps. He should have been a diplomat like his father. Instead, he had a career in real estate and intended to stay in England forever. He could not forget what his grandmother had said the last time he visited her in Bangkok. You are out of my family. I will not give you a stamp. Those were harsh words from his grandmother's mouth voiced out in response to his refusal to stay in Bangkok as she wished. He, a hard-headed young man, had never gone back home to Bangkok since then. He worked hard and his career earned him a big house near London. He was content with his life and promised himself that he would never go back to Thailand, ever. But now, his beloved grandmother, who had gone through her long-suffering illness, was facing a life and death situation. Despite the retaliatory acts all these years, he realized that he loved her very much. He had to go to see her, at least for the last time, before it was too late. Today is your birthday. We all shall drink for you. He forced himself to smile before raising his white glass to sip. Happy birthday to my lovely girl. Everyone sip their own wine. Happy birthday, my dearest daughter. I wish you good luck in everything you desire. I love you. So do I. Happy birthday to my dearest daughter. Chai Adishad had taken a small velvet box wrapped with a white ribbon from his black jacket's pocket. This gift is for you. Wow! 
She smiled broadly, taking the gift from him and immediately unwrapped the box. Her eyes were shining like stars, even though she did not like the gift that much. It was a gold necklace with a diamond music note pendant, not a heart-shaped one, as she had expected. Thank you. It's lovely. She smiled at him in a charming way and asked politely, Help me, please. He helped her put on the necklace. Hope you like it. I love it. Read my lips. I will wear it all the time. Thank you very much. She kissed his left cheek. Her parents smiled in embarrassment. No tiger would do such a thing. But no one dared to make any remarks. I know you are going to love it because you love playing piano, right? Child teacher said. That's right, my dear. Would you mind? Her mother had insisted. It's not the right time to be married. Ambassador Pawan said softly. Please, do not let me ruin everyone's happiness. Child teacher wanted to be nice despite the situation. Prabhupada smiled with pride and confidence before standing up and went to the grand piano on the round stage in front of everyone. She played a classical piece. A loud applause was given while the, when the music ended. She was very happy, so much that she forgot all about Chaitisha's bad news and the gift that she did not really care for too much. To Chai Atisha, the music did not get his slightest attention. His grandmother's illness was all that was on his mind. Have I been cruel to my grandchild? Dutjan sat in the waiting room in the hospital. She remembered what grandmother used to ask her when she was in a good health and in a good mood. The memory was so fresh, it was like it had just happened yesterday. Do you think he will come back home if he knows I'm going to die? Definitely. He loved his grandmother very much. Dutjan smiled and touched the old lady's arms gently. The grandmother was a 28-year-old lady with heart disease and high blood pressure. Despite her strict observance to the doctor's prescriptions, my grandson will not come to me. Grandmother pronounced with tears in her eyes. I was unreasonably bad to him just because I wanted to keep him with me forever. When he decided I cut him out of the family, I told him he would not receive a stung when I die. I know I am a stubborn old lady. Everyone hates me for what I have done. I hate my two daughters-in-law, so I cut them out of the family. My two sons, Danai and Don, left me. Danai and his wife, Vitlawan, died in a car accident. I sent my grandson to England to study in boarding school. Don and his family live in Chiang Mai. They never come back home to visit me. Poor me. Kunchai loves you very much. He will come to you. He will come home where he belongs. She replies with confidence. He has his own pride. If he does not come back, what shall I do? I have no one. Grandmother cried quietly. Dutjan would like to tell grandmother that if she had been nice to her own bloodline, He would not left he would not have left her. She had been like a mad dog that barked and attacked everyone who was near her, including Dukjan. Grandmother adopted Dukjan, an orphan girl, raised and gave her the education she needed. 
She was grandmother, close, and personal secretary, although she was not a real relative. All her time was dedicated to assisting and serving grandmother. She had no time to make friends with anyone. She herself had no one. As her thought evaporated, she was brought back to present. Duchan inhaled and exhaled deeply before she picked up a health and food magazine from the coffee table. She read the magazine to kill the time. Ma Inoi, you see, who comes to our home? Bun Mi Song La, a middle-aged man with a Thai northern Isan dialect, told his wife, Kam Di. He was a short man with the dark skin of a farmer. He was in his long cloth pakama, picking chilies from a small garden in front of his small house near the Mekong River. His wife was weaving a silk cloth. Kamdi was so excited to see her daughter standing there in front of the house. She shouted loudly in Isan dialect, Inai, 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 my daughter. A young woman with long hair, as deep black as her hair could be, which was tied with a black elastic band. Her beautiful oval face, perfectly shaped, to match her long eyebrows that arched over her big black eyes with long, with long eyelashes. Her beautiful nose fit her arrow bow upper lip. She is a beautiful woman indeed. In her white shirt and jeans and exercise shoes, she walked through the dust and the sunbeam towards her mom. Mom, wearing local clothes, Sir Kok Chao and Pasim was someone who was always in a very good mood and always kept a good attitude, walked slowly in slow motion mode towards her daughter. Mommy, Ime, two women, mom and daughter flung themselves into each other's arms. Miss you, mom. Miss you, do. Bunmi stood there, watching them with tears in his dark eyes. He was speechless. He added his tears of joy with tears caused by wiping his chilly picking hand to his eyes. It made him cry even harder. He hurried to the earthen jar near the stairs and flushed his eyes with rain water. No one noticed him. The end of chapter one. See you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.